I'm going to start with the solution. I, this presentation is in three sections. Part one is the solution. Part two, we examine the problem. And then part three, we talk about how to actually apply the solution to get the desired outcome. So I'll begin with part one, the solution. And the solution for the problems that humanity currently faces is indeed a raising of consciousness. Consciousness must be raised on a global scale. But to do that, the way that that is done is by raising it on an individual scale. Within each individual, consciousness must be raised. And as each individual consciousness is raised, global consciousness is raised. But in talking about consciousness and why this is the solution to all of the problems that humanity faces, most people don't really understand what consciousness is. They, they think of it as simply being physically awake. Yes, we have physical awake consciousness because we're awake, we're alert. But consciousness is much more than just a state of being physically awake. So we need a definition for consciousness as we go forward in the presentation. And uh, I, I'd like to uh, encapsulate how I feel about consciousness. This is a, uh, a quote that is on the oracle uh, at Delphi in Greece. This is uh, uh, words that are inscribed upon the Delphic oracle. Heed these words, you who wish to probe the depths of nature. If you do not find within yourself that which you seek, neither will you find it outside. If you ignore the wonders of your own house, how do you expect to find other wonders? In you is hidden the treasure of treasures. Know thyself, and you will know the universe and the gods. So this is one of my favorite quotes because it, it tells the whole story, essentially. We need to know ourselves. All knowledge of value ultimately is self-knowledge. And this is what we lack globally. We lack this as, a, as an entire species. And this is why we're in so much trouble today. This is why we're in the dark situation that we're in. Because we lack self-knowledge. We need to understand ourselves and our motivations and our desires and, and what makes us tick if we're really going to have any kind of happiness success or peace in our lives. And the ancients understood this and they encapsulated it perfectly in a statement like that and in the, the uh, buildings and in the architecture that they put together. Uh, perhaps they were more connected uh, with consciousness and with their own self-knowledge than we are today. So uh, this, is, this next slide is a, a dictionary definition of what consciousness is. Uh, an encyclopedia or a dictionary says that consciousness is the characteristics of a being generally regarded to comprise qualities such as subjectivity, self-awareness, sentience, sapience, and the ability to perceive the relationship between oneself and one's environment. Now that's an excellent definition of what consciousness is in, in my estimation. But it's a bit complex. There's a lot of words there. And instead of going into each word and breaking it down and defining it separately, we can take that as a, a, a pretty good definition of what consciousness is. But for the purposes of this presentation, I would like to just simplify it and take it down to a, a simpler level. So with that in mind, this is the definition of consciousness that I'm going to use going forward in this presentation. Consciousness is simply the ability of a being to recognize patterns and meaning with respect to events taking place, both within oneself and in the realm in which the self exists and operates. In other words, consciousness is the ability to understand information understand events that are taking place, the implications of them, and internal events and information as well as external worldly events and information. It is the ability to recognize patterns within information. 
That's the, my definition of consciousness as I'm using it in this presentation. So we want to keep that in mind as we move forward. The ancients had different symbols that they used for consciousness and energy. And uh, this is one of them. This is uh, called the Tao. Uh, some may know it as the yin and the yang. And this represented the all, everything, because everything is conscious. Everything is consciousness ultimately. It's all energy. And there are different mixtures of different types of energies. And uh, the Taoist um, um, philosophy codified this in this symbol, the, the, uh, the Tao, the yin yang, by um, a mixture of two basic polar energies. One being light, one being dark. One being male, one being female. They called these the yin and yang. Now, yang is on the left there, and it's solar. It has to do with light, the sun. It's masculine in its qualities. It's active. It's more analytical, and, and it's a dominant energy. It's more left brain. We're going to talk about the structure of the brain later on. And it can, it can be aggressive. It's, it's, it's dominant. It's active. It's a, a male thrusting principle. Okay? The, the darker energy, yin, is associated with the moon, which is up at night, okay? at, when it's dark. It's a feminine, a more feminine or passive energy. It relates more with intuition than with analytical thought or, lo or logic. It's more submissive than dominant. It's more right-brained. And it deals with concepts of compassion and nurturing. So the ancients looked at this as these are the qualities that are in all of us, not just men and women. It's not just male or female. This masculine and feminine energy is indwelling in all of us, whether we are male or female. And we have to strike a blend, a perfect blend, or an equilibrium of these two types of energies, male and female, yang and yin. So what we're going to talk about later is how one of these energies is really seemingly dominating the other more in the modern world. Another um, uh, mode or another um, uh, symbol that the ancients uh, used to explain what consciousness was is the triangle. Because they recognized that consciousness was a threefold aspect within an individual. Basically, an individual expresses their consciousness in three basic ways. And all other ways that they express themselves are offshoots or variants of these three basic modalities of consciousness. So in, in the ancient world, this was known as the law of three, or the, the triune aspect of the individual. And here's what they are. Our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. See, our thoughts are the creator of our experience. Everything that exists has to first exist as a thought to come into manifestation. So our thoughts can be seen as the creator God, the creator of our experience. So I have it labeled here, the Father of the Trinity of thought, emotion, and action. And thoughts arise from what we call mind. The second part is our emotions. This is the yin aspect of consciousness. Okay, so the thoughts are the, the holistic quality. It's the essence. Emotions are the yin as, aspect. This is the feminine aspect of consciousness. This is the spirit in which we do things, our emotions. So this is the sacred feminine, or the mother of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, if you will. Okay? This is the internalized expression of our consciousness, how we feel. And then there's the male aspect, what we do. So we have a thought, we feel a certain way about it, and then we take action in the world in relation to our thoughts and emotions. So our actions are the third aspect of our consciousness. 
and we perform actions with the body. And since it's a male principle, this is the yang energy, it's considered the offspring of our thoughts and our emotions. So it is the child of the father and the mother. And it's a male principle, so it's a male child, the son. So this could be seen as the divine child of the Trinity. Thoughts being the creator God, the emotions being the sacred feminine mother, and then our actions being the male offspring of those two, the divine male child, the son. So the next part of the presentation is going to deal with uh, how consciousness manifests itself through our physiology and the structure of the human brain because it's extremely important to understand the structure of the brain and how the, the different complexes within the brain function if we're going to understand what's really going on within us. So this is a uh, schematic diagram of the human brain and it shows that the brain is basically broken down into three sub-complexes. We have, in effect, three small brains working in unison as one whole uh, brain complex. And the three um, complexes within the brain are the R complex, or the reptile brain. You see it here at the bottom, and it is basically the brain stem and the cerebellum, the dark part right behind the brain stem right here, the cerebellum, and this is the brain stem. So, this part of the brain governs our survival instincts. It has to do with uh, our motor skills. It has to do with um, all things that we interact with in the physical world. Movement, um, uh, basic um, survival techniques, uh, the, the necessity for food, to take food and nutrients into the body, um, shelter, clothing, warmth, etc. So the reptile brain is geared toward the physical, the physical world, and it is, it, it is focused upon survival. That's what helps us to focus on the physical things that we need to do to survive on a day-to-day -day basis the R complex or the reptile brain. So the second subcomplex of the brain is the mammalian brain or the limbic brain. And this is the part of the brain that basically governs our emotions. It, 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 makes, our, it makes our emotions capable of being expressed through our body. In other words, it pumps all of the chemicals the neuropeptides into the body from this part of the brain that makes us feel the consequences of what we do in the world. So this is the, um, the limbic brain and it can be seen as the uh, intuitive part of the brain since it generates our emotions. Uh, it's comprised of the um, hypothalamus, uh, the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the, the pineal and pituitary glands. So uh, that's the midbrain. And um, there, there's a, a third part of the brain that most people, when they see it, they, they think that that is the entire brain, the, the, the gray matter of the brain. And it is simply one of the complexes of the brain, but it is by far the most complex and by far the part of the brain that gives us our human qualities, and that is the neocortex. It's called the human brain. This is the part of the brain that is responsible for higher order thinking within a human being. It makes higher order thinking possible. All of the things that distinguish us from the animal kingdom, it, it, it takes place within the neocortex. Art, science, music, uh, speech, verbal and written communication, all neocortical functions. So these three parts of the brain can also be seen to be symbolic analogs of consciousness, of the trinity of consciousness, as we have already talked about. See, 
the reptile complex of the brain is based upon control. It's the part of the brain that makes us want to control our environment so that we survive. And this can be seen as the Old Testament God, obsessed with law, obsessed with regimen, with control. So it's the dominator aspect of the brain. A reptile is a creature of instinct, without emotion, cold-blooded, just focused on survival. The sacred feminine part of the brain, what I correlate to the Holy Spirit, is the midbrain, the, the limbic system, the limbic brain, the mammal brain. So it is um, what generates our emotions, the spirit in which we do things. So that's the feminine aspect of, of the brain complex. And then the, the most important part of the brain by far is the neocortex because that's what that's where all of our human qualities are, are, are really derived out of the activity that takes place within this part of the brain. Without the neocortex, we wouldn't be able to do any of the things that make us human. So this can be seen as the, the light, the thing that truly separates us from, from the animal kingdom. And it is the, the sun, the divine child, that's the product of these other two brains, with the reptile complex being the father, the limbic system being the mother, and then they bear the divine child, the neocortex, the light of the world, so to speak, because uh, the prefrontal neocortex was known as the third eye and uh, by the ancients, and this is the part of the brain that is responsible for our highest order thinking, and it's the seat of higher consciousness in the physiology. So these three parts of the brain, the triune brain, as it's called in the scientific world, is a, a symbolic analog to the aspects of consciousness and the, and the types of energy that we talked about when we talked about the Tao. So, absolutely important to understand how these components function and what happens if they become imbalanced, which we'll talk about later in the presentation. Now, to understand that we have to understand that the neocortex itself is bilaterally symmetrical. It's divided down the middle, it's in two distinct parts, two distinct halves, and they're called brain hemispheres. So there's a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere, and they, uh, they govern different functions of an individual. So the left brain of an individual governs things like logic. Uh, analytical thought processes, verbal communication, our language, mathematics and science, okay? Uh, anything that requires analysis and logic, okay? So it's the masculine side of the brain. Hard facts, hard fi figures, physical worldliness, reason, okay? The right brain functions entirely differently. It's more holistic. It governs holistic thoughts, spiritual thought. It is intuitive. It's where our intuition is derived from. It's the creative center of the individual. So artistic uh, uh, capability is derived from this part of the brain. All kinds of creativity, music, etc., art, comes from this part of the brain. So it, it, it's the feminine aspect of the brain. So you have a male side of the brain and you have a female side of the brain. And it isn't that one is better than the other. It's that they need to be balanced just like the yin and yang energies. They need to be balanced to come to a state of wholeness, of working in unison with each other and equilibrium. And that's a truly um, ordered individual, a, a person who really um, it is truly awakened consciousness has a balanced brain. They're, they're using both brain hemispheres in conjunction with each other. When that is done, the prefrontal neocortex that, that governs the highest order thinking within the individual really comes online. And uh, that's kind of the opening of the third eye, so to speak. And that only happens when these two brain uh, hemispheres come into coherence with each other. And a little bit later, I'm going to talk about what happens if these brain hemispheres are radically out of balance with each other. What happens if 
one side really is dominating the other. And there's very little activity taking place in one hemisphere of the brain, but a whole lot on the other. And uh, not too uh, uh, unpleasant things begin to occur. Things that aren't too good in our experience uh, begin to happen uh, when the brain is in significant states of imbalance. So I'll be talking about that later. Again, the left brain is the yang energy, the right brain is the yin energy in correlation to Taoism. So the, uh, the symbols for these, which will become important as we go forward and talk about symbology, are uh, the upward pointing triangle. In the ancient world, the upward pointing triangle seen here was known as the blade. This is a, uh, a symbol representing male energy or yang energy. Uh, it's a rudimentary phallic symbol. It's uh, an, an upward pointing triangle. It's, uh, it's like a, the tip of the spear, okay? Or it's, a, uh, like I said, a rudimentary phallic symbol. These are thrusting elements, a spear, a penis, uh, male active thrust, okay? Um, the opposite of that, yin energy, is the inverted triangle. Okay, so you just are taking it and you're using its opposite, an inverted triangle. This is like the shape of a womb, the shape of the, the lower portion of the female anatomy that, that bears children. You know, it, it's like a, a chalice that holds uh, wine or blood. You know, the Holy Grail is a, a concept of, uh, of this uh, inverted triangle. It was known as the chalice in the ancient world. So you have the blade, and that represents the yang energy, the left brain, and then the, the chalice, the inverted triangle, that represents the yin energy or the right brain. So keep those symbols in mind uh, and how they correlate to consciousness and how they correlate to the brain as we go forward because we will be seeing them again.